of Sergeant C.J. Murphy with the Atlanta Police Department. I've been with the department for about 10 years now. I am currently assigned to the City of Atlanta Police Academy as an instructor. Every day, my job is to supervise and uh, organize the Atlanta police recruits. I'm in charge of their training, their field training, and just making sure we produce the best police officers. One of the classes that I'm in charge of teaching is the implicit and explicit bias class. Uh, that is a class where we talk about different races, religions, sexualities, genders. We want to make sure that our police officers are understanding, empathetic, uh, make sure they don't have any underlying prejudices uh, against any group uh, that represents Atlanta. When I saw the incident with George Floyd, I felt my heart broke. My heart literally broke because I, I saw a man who could be my brother. I saw my uncles, my cousins, my best friend. I saw all those people in him. And as I heard him scream in agony, I just kept saying, get off of him. Let him go. Let him up. And as a police officer, it makes you furious. We're not taught to do that here at all. And what happened was criminal. And it upset me. It still upsets me to this day. I cannot stand a bad cop. I serve on the Civil Disturbance Unit. We respond when there are protests. Uh, our biggest thing is to make sure that when there are agitators in the crowd, we're able to protect uh, innocent people who are out there peacefully protesting and make sure property isn't burned or destroyed. As an African-American officer, uh, being in the protest involved a lot of emotions, a lot of emotions because I was hurting for my community. I wanted to protect everyone, to, to speak out, to scream that I'm with you. You know, this is one of the reasons I became a police officer. This is one of the things we fought for with the Civil Rights Movement, was to be able to become police officers, to wear, to wear the uniform, to police our communities, to be able to equally have the same powers as everyone else when it came to uh, arresting and the judicial system. And to see other members of the community who look like me crying and weeping and screaming and yelling and asking me, how could I put on this uniform and be black? How could I put on this uniform as a black woman? It hurt because I really put on this uniform for them. And I wasn't able to address that or even, even touch or make them understand what I was feeling. Our emotions aren't able to be expressed when we have that uniform on. When I was on the front line, one of the questions that uh, people kept posing to me is why do we have all the black officers on the front? And I, I was stunned at that question. It's like we were purposely putting black officers on the front line just to take this verbal and mental and emotional abuse, and that's not the case. Atlanta Police Department is 60% black, and that's something that I'm very proud of because there's not a lot of places you can go and see that amount of black officers on a force. To receive uh, threats and to hear chants of uh, Uncle Tom and a new age slave catcher, people calling me a, a coon and a traitor, is not who I am at all. They have no idea who I am. Slavery was abolished? Slavery is illegal unless you commit a crime. And I am the person who will come to your house, who will sit with your son or daughter, who will play basketball, who will volunteer in the community. I mentor kids, I buy, buy supplies. Uh, we do a Christmas drive for the kids in the shelter. Uh, we, we are those type of officers. We're not out here to cause anyone harm. And being on that front line, it hurt. It hurt because nobody knew. Nobody knew, nobody understood to be black and to be an officer. But most of all, to understand what it's like to be black because once you take off the uniform, you're still black. So uh, during the protests, uh, my officers, we took it upon ourselves at times to speak to the people in the crowd. If we could safely, I would ask, would you like to have a conversation? If they were yelling, I could see they were upset. They just want to express themselves. They want to be heard. Would you like to have a conversation? And there was one gentleman who said, yes. Uh, his name was Leonard. Uh, Leonard and I had a full on try to a discussion. No. Because you don't represent me. You want to make a change, make a partnership with me. Your man will help you You take that badge off and I will. I tried to express to Leonard that I was here to help him, to protect him. That's why I wore the uniform. Leonard had a different idea. You're still killing us, and you're talking about change. What change? What change? How? We're still dying. He wanted me to understand as a black man that he was tired of being pushed and being bullied. He said he was angry. At one point, I asked him, I said, do you not think that I'm angry too? 
I asked them to join me. I said, join me. Help me make a change. Help me make a difference. We can work together. We can be allies. I can come from this side. You can come from, from that side. We can work together. From this side, it ain't going to change. From this side, it ain't going to never change. We've been waiting 400 years for it to change. He didn't want to hear that. He said he would never join me as long as I had this badge on. And that's the part that we have to understand. We have to have people on both sides in order to make a change. And I believe as long as we have people who are anti-police, we're going to have to work twice as hard because it's easier to spread that narrative if you want to. It's easier to go on social media. And there are bad cops. We recognize that. We understand that. But there are more good cops out here who want to do the right thing, who want to help the community, who want to serve. And those are the cops that are going to stay and stand and make a difference. But we can't do it by ourselves. And I would like to invite anyone who would like to join the police department to help us during this time to come out. We need police officers. We need a diverse workforce. We need black officers, white officers, Asian, Hispanic. I'm inviting anyone with a heart who's empathetic, who wants to make a difference to come join APD.